lesson one, force concepts, some vocabulary, and some fundamental stuff we're going to wrap our brain around. What's the definition of a force? There are fancy schmancy physics definitions. Oh, and I should say, everything that I'm going to teach you is wrong. Technically, there are only four forces. There are four fundamental forces. There's force of gravity, there's the strong nuclear force, there's the weak nuclear force, and there's electromagnetism, and that's it. So when I'm talking about friction and normal forces, and uh, those are all combinations of all the four fundamental, that it's just much easier for us to wrap our brain around. And if we wanted to go into the rabbit hole and break everything down into electromagnetism, strong nuclear, weak nuclear, and gravity, we could, we're not going to do that. So I'm going to be giving you a bunch of forces. We're going to call them forces, but I should say in real life, if you ask me, do they exist in the universe? No, they're combinations of the four fundamentals. I'm never going to say that again, though. We're going to pretend all the forces that I'm talking about do exist. A force is a push or a pull. There are better definitions, but like fancier science-y ones. But that's a good one to wrap our brain around. It is a vector. Direction matters. Put your pencil down. OK? Force uh, has a magnitude and a vector. It's got direction and magnitude. It's measured in uh, units of Newtons, named after a scientist whose last name was. You know, Sir Isaac Newton. I'll go on a Sir Isaac Newton rant a bit later. Forces are based on interactions between two objects. Some important forces that we're going to study in this course this year will include the following. The first force is that uh, we call it, it's, it's the Earth pulling on all objects, uh, pulling them downwards towards the planet's center. What do we call that force? Okay, gravity. What symbol will we use for that? Typically, we use a capital F for force and a lowercase subscripted G for gravity, FG. Now, you may also see this used as a capital W. I like to use W for work, but why might they use W? What else is another word for the force that gravity applies upon you that begins with the letter W? Wait. Technically, in physics, when I say, what's your weight, it really means, uh, what's the force of gravity on you, OK? I'm not going to use the W because it's work. I'm going to use FG. Uh, what's the force that we describe as the microscopic hills and valleys between an object and a surface that interlock and impede or prevent sliding? Yeah. My symbol for friction, for some reason, and I don't know why, I almost always put an FR, not just an F. You can go FF, but for some reason, I go F. -fr. Weird habits I picked up over the years, Clay. What's the force that is a surface pushing up on an object? It's also called an object's apparent weight. I'll give you a hint. It's normally there. OK. Call it the normal force. Normal, in this case, is a math term. In math, when you say two objects are normal to each other, you mean they're at a 90 degree angle. In other words, it always pushes up at a 90 degree angle. Look up for a second. There are some textbooks that will, don't write this down, that will use that for the normal force. The problem is that looks like North and Newtons. That's too many things. So I'm going to choose to go with F with a subscripted N, the normal force. Okay. Uh, about six years ago, I was marking uh, physics 12. I was marking the provincial exam. And there was a question on the exam on the written section, and it said, find Fn, the normal force. And a kid wrote, which was funny, but he still got a zero. But OK, whatever. You know, I mean, if you're going to go down in flames, if you can go down and make a one-liner, OK, I'll, 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 props to that. Um, what's the force from a stretched string or a, that a, a rope exerts? It's constant throughout the string. Tension. Tension. 
I use a capital T for tension. Or you may see some books use uh, F with a T. But again, I tend to use a T, which is probably technically wrong, but whatever. What is the contact force from an external or outside agent, usually a person or so, uh, something off the screen? This one's a bit obscure. Begins with letter A, AP, APP, okay. Oh, good gosh. And Jason, what I mean by that one is often in a picture, you'll just see a mystery force coming in from off screen. You can assume there's a person pushing there, or if you, you can assume there's a little invisible angel there, whatever you want. But it's the, the applied force. We don't want to give, it could be a tractor, it could be uh, whatever. It, there's there's a, an external force. I don't want to have to make up a story to explain that one. Uh, what do we call the force of resistance that's created by the air and is always opposite to the direction of motion? Now, one term is that word and that word, air resistance. The fancy term for it is drag. Air resistance drag is very tough. In fact, you need calculus to analyze it properly. The reason it's so tough is if you've ever stuck your hand out of the window of a moving car, you might notice the faster you move, what happens to the force of air resistance? Bigger, smaller, or stays the same? See, but if you're falling, the faster you move, the bigger air resistance. Now you're going to slow down. You're not going to fall as fast. Now air resistance just got smaller. Well, now you're going to speed up again. You're going to fall. You, you, to, you really need calculus to deal with that. You need drag coefficients and all sorts of stuff. So although I've called it drag for the purposes of physics 12 to keep the math clean, I'm going to treat it mathematically. I'll call it F air. I'll treat it just like friction. I'll call it air friction which, again, is technically wrong, but I already told you at the beginning of this lesson, everything I'm telling you is wrong because there's only four fundamental forces. All these ones are garbage. The last one is not a force per se, but it's the vector sum or the resultant of all of the forces acting on the object. Or it's the right-hand side of the equal sign. We'll talk about that. We call that the net force. You're going to hear me use this term quite often. You're going to hear me say, well, what's F net? What's the net force? Put your pencils down. I got to go on my Sir Isaac Newton rant. So Sir Isaac Newton sum summarized all of motion, three laws, three laws. Newton's first, Newton's second, and Newton's third. Newton's second is the equation that we'll look at in a second, F equals MA. We'll come to that on the next page. It's Newton's first and Newton's third that are trickier, and they're phrased terribly. I'm going to tell you how most textbooks phrase them, and I'm going to give you Mr. Duke's handy-dandy schmandy way to wrap your brain around a little easier. Newton's first law normally is said something like this. Objects at rest tend to remain at rest. Objects in motion tend to remain in motion, which kind of has some rhythm to it, but huh? Or as I wrote here, every object in a state of uniform motion tends to remain in that state of motion unless an external force is... Huh? Here's what it says. The only way that you can accelerate an object or change its velocity is to apply an unbalanced outside force. If an object is accelerating, there must be an unbalanced outside force. There has to be. If it's not accelerating, and remember, Mitch, not accelerating can mean stopped or constant speed, then there can't be an unbalanced outside force. This is the law that's going to help us figure out when we're doing pictures if we're missing anything. This is often called the law of inertia. This is often called the law of inertia. Yes? Unbalanced means 
it's not canceled out. In other words, if I'm pushing against myself with my other hand, the same magnitude, those are balanced. If I'm pushing, that's unbalanced. Okay. It can, uh, we're we're going to get all three-dimensional in a second, so patience. A little Calvin and Hobbes, it says, explain Newton's first law of motion in your own words. Calvin looks terrified. Then he has his brainwave. He says, yaka, food, mog, grug, pubba, wump, zinc, watum, gazork, chumble, spuzz, which is Newton's first law in his own words, but don't try that on a test. I won't give you marks for that. Newton's first law. The law of inertia. Pick up your pencils. Newton's second law. Newton's second law is the equation. Newton's second law tells us how to calculate force. It's F equals MA. It is on your formula sheet. You will end up memorizing this one because you'll use it 60 zillion times. We'll explore this more later. I should say in the interests of hashtag nerd trivia, Newton actually never wrote F equals MA. He was much more interested in acceleration. So he wrote his version as A equals F over M. But traditionally, it's just said F equals MA. Newton's third. Newton's third law is often called the law of action-reaction. It's usually phrased something terribly like, uh, for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. Oh, terrible. I got a much easier way to wrap your brain around Newton's third law. I think of Newton's third law as follows. Forces come in pairs. Forces come in pairs. And that's true. You cannot have an individual force on its own. There's always a paired force to go with it. There has to be. Forces come in pairs. If I want to write it as an equation, the force of object A on object B is negative the force of object B on object A. They're equal and opposite. They're equal and opposite. 